In chapter 13, we are going to be focusing on solutions. That's the title of the chapter. And a solution is something that uh, is prepared by dissolving a substance in a solvent. So the solution has that root word, sol, for dissolving. The solute is the substance that gets dissolved and the solvent is the substance that does the dissolving. Most of the time water is what the solvent is. And I'm going to use an example of sodium chloride or salt. Remember sodium chloride is an ionic solid. We're going to look at a picture of it in the book in just a few minutes. And we know that this is a solid, this is table salt. And if we put salt in water, we can make a salt water solution. Sometimes that's called a saline solution. But the way we would show that chemically, instead of writing the S for solid, we would write AQ after that. And AQ uh, means aqueous. And aqueous automatically means that water is the solvent. So there are lots of different solvents. For example, paint thinner is a solvent. Uh, but in this chapter, the solvent is always going to be water. And lots of things do dissolve in water. So when sodium chloride dissolves in water, this is an ionic compound. And it's composed of a metal ion and a nonmetal ion. And when, if the ionic compound is soluble, then when it's in water, it's going to break apart into the separate ions. So we may have heard of deionized water. That would be water where the ions were taken out of solution. I'm going to look at a page in the book that shows what sodium chloride looks like. So we recall this from uh, chapter 5. And all ionic compounds are stacks of colored marbles. And remember, the nonmetal steals an electron from the metal. And when salt dissolves in water, the water, because it's polar, um, can break these compounds apart. So the chloride is dissolved in water, and the sodium is also dissolved in water. And then down here, this just shows a picture of that. This would be our solid sodium chloride on a molecular level. When we dissolve salt in water, we have these ions floating around. And we know if we look at salt water, we don't see colored substances floating around, but this is just to show the different ions in water. I'm going to show a couple of solutions that we used in lab number five. One of the things that we did was we added, we took a silver nitrate solution. And in chapter 13, we're going to focus on this capital letter M. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But silver nitrate is also an ionic compound. So this occurs as a solid, AgNO3. That's a solid. In fact, we buy that uh, from the lab. So silver nitrate looks just like salt. You can't really see it in here. Maybe we could see that, but it looks like salt. It's another ionic compound. And when we make a solution, then all we do is take the solid and dissolve it in water. We're going to see later on that this capital M, which is molarity, refers to how concentrated a solution is. Uh, another solution that's colored is uh, nickel. Nickel nitrate is also a uh, ionic compound. This is nickel plus two, so there's two nitrates there. And this would be another 0.1 molar solution. Nickel nitrate just happens to be green, but again, we buy this as a solid. So uh, we can dissolve this in water so that the solid salt is the solute and water's the solvent and then the entire thing is the solution. And then I've got a couple solutions of copper. This is another 0.1 molar solution. This is copper nitrate. And I don't know if we're going to be able to see, 
if we have a more concentrated solution, well, that's that's a little bit darker blue. So this capital M is going to be another way to find moles. And we're going to be interested in how many moles of a certain substance there are in a particular volume of solution. So just recognizing that, uh, again, if we dissolve this in water, so we add two water, what we're going to have are silver ions in solution. So this ionic compound would break apart into Ag, and we would put this aqueous, uh, that shows what state that's in, plus we'd have nitrate ions in solution. So we're going to see Aq. And we are going to be paying attention to um, ways of expressing how concentrated a solution is. So solutions vary in their concentrations. One concentration that we may be somewhat familiar with is a percent concentration. So uh, we might just say dilute um, or concentrated. So we should have a feeling of what uh, what that means. Oops, concentrated. So if I put these side by side, maybe we can see that if I take the camera down here and uh, oops. So if we look at both of these solutions, this is a 0.1 molar solution of copper and then this is a 5 molar solution of copper. So this just looks like darker Kool-Aid because it's more concentrated. There's actually more copper uh, sulfate in that more concentrated solution. Okay.